I'm going to give you the plan for the evening here. Um, planting a church is not something formulaic. You plug in the right numbers, do the right procedures, and out comes success. We recognize we're dealing with spiritual realities that require supernatural power. So as we think about launching Gilbert Bible Church this week, we are just going to spend our evening together praying. And so each of the elders are going to come and pray, and then you'll have opportunity to pray at the end as well. So uh, we'll have Josh begin us, and uh, we'll just spend this time together asking the Lord to do what only he can do. Let's pray together as we do so. Uh, just a few verses from 1 Thessalonians 1. I'm going to guide my portion of prayer this evening. Father, we thank you for your tremendous grace in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the hope that we have. And Lord, as we think of what you have done in this church for 21 years, we could do nothing else but simply give thanks. And so we do that. We give thanks to you with fond affection in our hearts. Lord, as we give thanks, we keep in mind, we bear in mind your work and what you have done in the members of Grace Bible Church and their faith that has worked itself out in the lives of individuals and the labor and love that has manifested itself in this church, the steadfastness of hope that we have experienced in, Lord, in you, Lord, all that you have done. Lord, we are grateful for your choice of us, what you have accomplished by your great grace. And Lord, to be stewards of your gospel is a privilege beyond measure. And so again, we rejoice and we thank you. And as we participate in this endeavor of Gilbert Bible Church, we recognize our utter, complete need for you. And so Lord, the things that we have practiced and learned and embraced over the last 21 years, I pray that Grace Bible Church would continue in those things faithfully and intentionally. And for Gilbert Bible Church, I pray that we would take those things as well and that we would walk in them in faithfulness and steadfastness and diligence and perseverance and joy and love. I pray that we would abound in love for you and love for each other and love for our community, Lord, that our love for one another would be evident to all and that you would be glorified in these things. Lord, we know that there is tremendous power in the gospel, and so help us to stay faithful to you. Help us to fear you. Help us to fear you above all else. Help us to fear you in a manner that makes us faithful to your word. Help us to tremble before your instruction. Help us to not be intimidated or deterred by earthly things, but help us to have an unwavering resolve. Help us to be humble before you. Help us to be godly and righteous. Lord, help us to be full of compassion and patience in this endeavor. We pray for souls to know you. We pray for lives to be changed, for sinners to be conformed more into the image of Christ-likeness as a result of your work as we seek to faithfully labor for your glory. Lord, I pray for the elders going, for myself and Tom, Pray for Tyler as an elder intern. Help us to be faithful to shepherd the flock. Help us to be faithful to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And for Gilbert Bible Church, pray that you would help our body, even as a, an infant, to have a profound maturity in the practice of what you have called us to be faithful to. Help us to not seek to reinvent things under our own wisdom or with our own devices, but help us to be faithful to your instruction. We pray all these things. In the beautiful name of Jesus, who has made this possible because of his great sacrifice. Amen. Lord God, when I look back on the last 21 years of Grace Bible Church and the many trials that you have brought us through and your hand that has been on this church, through so many different situations, Lord. I am reassured that you love Grace Bible Church more than any one of us could. And it is such a great joy to be able to participate in your work here, Lord. 
and as we begin to send out many of our best friends to go do a new work in a new area of the valley under your sweet hand and guidance. Lord, what joy that is. Lord, thank you for Josh. Lord, remembering who he was, where he was uh, when we planted, uh, what you've done in his heart, how you've grown his love for you, how you've grown his skill for being able to shepherd sheep. Lord, it's been a joy to watch my brother grow in his love for you, to be able to send him off to do this work, Lord. It's sad, and there is no greater joy. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to um, participate in your work in his life and to be able to see what you've done, Lord. Lord, I pray for Gilbert Bible Church specifically as we think through the many sheep that are going and their love for this work. Lord, so many of them were there the first day we started. Lord, and what an excitement it was to start this church and what an excitement it is to be able to start a new one. Lord, because we just get to participate in what you do. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, you don't have to build churches. You don't have to save people through us. Lord, you could do whatever you wanted to save and grow sheep, to save and grow people. And yet you give us the honor of being able to participate. Lord, thank you. Lord, I pray for Tom and Ann. Lord, you brought them to this church at the absolute right time. Uh, I know Jenna and I were hurting in those days. I know many of us were hurting. And as Smed said, I think every single one of us had been counseled by them. Lord, I'm so excited to be able to send them to care for a new flock, a new set of people who need the wisdom that they've imparted on us. Lord, thank you for growing them in their love for you over these last many years, Lord, so that they could be equipped to be sent, Lord. It's such a gift to participate in this. In your name, amen. God, we don't make churches. We did not make, men did not make Grace Bible Church. God, we thank you for appointing members and arranging members in this body just as you have chosen. And thank you for the privilege of the miracle of making a whole nother organism, a whole nother body in Gilbert. And God, we it feels like we are losing members in this church. We are losing so many of our best friends to go to Gilbert like Smed said, for a very short time. But we thank you for the privilege of being able to be a part of this body, then duplicate and make another one, and trust you for the provision to do all of the ministry that you have for the body. God, I pray for Grace Bible Church, now with fewer members, but still a church. I pray that you would fill the gaps no doubt we will miss the best of us that we are sending. So many of our really, really good friends, so many very skilled ministers. God, we trust you, and I pray that you would fill those gaps. And thank you for the openings that that leaves, for the ability for us to draw in more, build up more, and I pray that we would do that diligently. And God, for the church that's planted, smaller, newer, but I pray not immature. I pray with a maturity far beyond its years, you would establish Gilbert Bible Church. And it would be a sweet, fertile ground with its members arranged just as you would desire as we plant them, fully sufficient for the work that you have ordained. God, I pray that Gilbert Bible Church uh, would be fruitful, would draw in, people would be built up, and they would even be duplicating, sending out in years in the future. 
And God, I pray in the meantime that we would be preparing here and here at Grace Bible Church for ministry that we don't even know about and that which we do. God, I pray that we would be diligent and faithful, not merely to feel the loss of Gilbert, of those that we're sending to Gilbert, but to long to even send more to New Orleans, maybe more to Papua New Guinea, other parts of town and other mission fields and places for church plants that we haven't even considered. And God, in the meantime, I just beg that you would make both churches faithful to you. I pray that every one of us, from the leadership level on down, each of the elders, each of the deacons, every one of the members, that we would keep a close watch on ourselves. God, I pray that we would take sin seriously, that we would cling wholeheartedly to you, trust with our entire heart and soul in the gospel, that we would not waver from the truth of your word. God, I pray that we would keep a close watch on ourselves and the teaching, and that many more would be saved through their involvement in this church and all the churches that we plant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father, we thank you that you are the sovereign over the universe, that you are the one who planned salvation before the foundation of the world, that you sent your son to be the savior of the world, and that the idea of planting churches is not man's idea, that's the, the, that's the founder's idea, because Jesus said that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we thank you that this is your work. And we thank you that you include men in your work. That you have designed, you left the world, but sent your apostles out to, to start your church. And that the apostles charged those that would come after them to stay true to the teaching of the apostles, to stay true to what they heard in the beginning. And we thank you that in this church that we have those who desire the truth, those are here, many are here because they want to hear the word. They want to be functioning according to your word. And we pray, Father, that each one of us here will truly minister according to your word and in your spirit. And then as the church plant begins, that they also will have the same spirit, the same ministry, the same faithfulness to your word. We pray that uh, the elders here will continue to be strengthened at, even though we're fewer and uh, that the ones that go out will be strengthened because they are few also. But we, we look to you, we pray that that new plant will grow and that there will be people in that community that are, are reached with the gospel, that you might be glorified in further east as well as here, that both churches will continue to flourish for the glory of your name. Help us each, each one of us, Father, to search our hearts, to turn from sin, to hear you speak, to be obedient, to pattern our lives according to your word. And uh, in a special way, we would pray your blessing on Tyler and 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 Tom and Scott as, and and uh, Josh as they lead this new tr church, that this they will have your blessing, that they will be a great uh, benefit to the believers that gather there. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Father, that is what we get to do when we are with you. We get to be around your throne, worshiping you, crying out, worthy is the lamb. In here, in this life, we get to cry out, worthy is the lamb. And we are sending Gilbert Bible Church to proclaim that message, that Jesus, you are worthy because of what you've done, because you were slain. Because you were slain for a people that were your enemies, that hated you. God, that is a message that sounds ridiculous to unbelieving ears. And yet that is the message you've given us. That's the message that you have used to transform us. And God, we are, we are all sinners. All of those that are going on this church plant are all sinners. We confess that to you. We confess our dependence upon you, upon your spirit to do a work in us, to sanctify us. To sanctify all of us, to sanctify those that are going for the purpose, Jesus, that they would glorify you both in this life and in the next. We are thankful that you have positioned Grace Bible Church to send out Gilbert Bible Church for all of these years, two decades worth of your faithfulness. When the doors were about ready to be shut, when there was a meeting being held about doing just that, through all the other trials and circumstances, there is no reason that Grace Bible Church even exists outside of what your clear hand has done. And here we are positioned to, to plant another church that is just your sovereign hand. And we are thankful for that. I'm thankful for the, for Tom and for Josh and for the faithful ministry that they've had here. I'm thankful for Tyler and his faithful serving that he has done here. And that for those men, as they go, I'm thankful for those that have volunteered to, to transplant themselves and, and be a part of that work, that hard work. Lord Jesus, I do pray. I pray for faithfulness and holiness. I pray as they all go, that they would be a church. I have confidence that they will be a church that will lift up your word high. I pray that they would lift it, submit to it, obey it. Not for, to point fingers at themselves, but to point fingers at you and your faithfulness that they would be pleasing to you and that they would bear fruit in every good work. Jesus, we lift these things up to you and it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you give us the gift of prayer and thank you for tonight to be able to pour out our hearts to you in anticipation of what you alone can do through your church. Uh, thank you for the gift of prayer that you even stirred us up, that tonight we would set apart time to pour out our hearts to you as a congregation. This is something that you have done throughout your word and throughout the history of salvation. You've stirred up the nation of Israel to ask you to accomplish what you promised you would accomplish. And the very, the very fact that prayer is such a powerful means uh, does not speak to our ability, it speaks to your ability. And that you even use this means to stir us up in anticipation of what you will do. So, Lord, as we, as we pour out our hearts right now, it's very humbling to think about what answered prayer will look like for Gilbert Bible Church. It's thrilling, Lord, to think that here we are in 
on this particular night, not knowing the future, but knowing your character, with the gift of prayer, we can pour out our hearts to you and anticipate that you will indeed accomplish your good pleasure. You will indeed glorify your name through this church. You will indeed sustain the humble. And Lord, it's incredible to think that um, we'll, we'll have the privilege of even boasting in you when we see the answers to this prayer. You say in your word that this is the confidence that we have before you, that if we ask anything according to your name, you will hear us. And if we ask anything according to your name and we know that you hear us, then we already have the requests we ask. And so, Lord, as we ask you to glorify the gospel, as we ask you to sustain Gilbert Bible Church, as we ask you to uh, make Gilbert Bible Church a, a brilliantly bright beacon of the gospel for the glory of your Son, for the edification of the saints, for the salvation of the lost. Um, Lord, that's, that's a prayer that's in line with your, with your name. So we, we pray that boldly tonight simply because you've revealed your character and you've told us the nat your nature, the nature of your church, and we know these men. And so we, we pray these things boldly because there's expectation, humbly because we don't deserve to be heard. Confidently, because such a request is eminently in line with your character. And so, Lord, I um, just thank you for the fact that we can commend all the saints who are going. That we can commend um, this very endeavor to you with such confidence. When we think about the fact that um, earth and heaven cannot contain you, where could you possibly dwell? You made it very clear that you dwell among those who are broken and contrite and who tremble at your word. And so I pray that everyone who goes, and I pray for everyone who stays, that both of these churches would be marked by saints who tremble before you, who are consumed with pleasing you and trembling at your word. I pray that for Gilbert Bible Church, that the word would remain uh, the central focal point. I pray for Tom and Josh that they would hold fast to your word with humility and conviction, with selflessness as they've already done for, uh, the, throughout their shepherding careers, and that as they hold fast to the word of life, they would reprove those who contradict and exhort those in sound doctrine. And, and I pray that for the saints who go, that they would speak truth and love and that as your word is honored and revered, you know, that you would establish your word to your servants as that which produces reverence for you. And uh, Lord, I would like to just pray Paul's prayer to the, for the Ephesians. I'd like to pray that for everyone at uh, Gilbert Bible and here at Grace. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul told Timothy, command and teach these things. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but show yourself as a model to those who believe in word, conduct, love, faith, and purity. 
Until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the gift within you, which was given to you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. God, this is our prayer this evening, that these marks of a faithful servant would characterize those uh, those leaders leading Gilbert Bible Church, uh, particularly Josh and Tom and Tyler, as they open up your word with the saints going, uh, those who are leaving this church to be a part of Gilbert Bible Church, as well as those who will undoubtedly join themselves to Gilbert Bible Church, who aren't here currently, and I pray these things would mark those men, that they would instruct with authority, that they would be leading the flock by example. Uh, We know that your word is the only thing that has the power to produce life, to produce spiritual maturity spiritual sensitivity, a clean conscience that endures, that that is all a a work of your spirit, God, uh, through your word. And the proclamation of your word, uh, you've made it such that it requires a pure vessel uh, so that as we just read, it would save both the preacher and those who hear his message. And so we pray that for uh, Josh and the other men leading, that they would be characterized by a holiness of life that comes through in the teaching as they open up God's word, that the teaching would sanctify the lives of the listeners, that as the sheep bring themselves under the authority of your word, that they would experience the sanctifying effects of practicing the very things that they're hearing. God, I pray that as those men give themselves to the pastoral duties, that you would uh, strengthen the flock around them, that the saints around them would serve in such a way that allows them to give themselves more fully to the word and prayer, to the equipping of the flock, that you would give uh, insight and courage and uh, holiness of life that makes men and women useful in such a way that they would be able to bear responsibilities and take on tasks uh, with wisdom and with uh, spiritual insight that would enable Josh and Tom and Tyler to give themselves uh, to diligent study and counseling and shepherding uh, duties. That is crucial to a, a long ministry that we pray that this church would have. I pray that those men would cultivate those giftings that you've graciously given to them, that it would be evident uh, to even us uh, who've been the beneficiaries for years now of these men's service and shepherding, that we would be able to uh, look into the ministry happening at Gilbert Bible Church and see the progress that each of those men has over the next few weeks, months, and years even, that you would make their progress evident to all. God, I pray that those men would pay close attention 
to their own souls, to their teaching. And even as they persevere in those things, God, that you would make them labor for eternity, for uh, the eternal souls of men and women in their charge, that you would protect them from error, that you would protect them from wolves, that you would protect them from those who would seek to divide your church and prevent the word from going forth, prevent holiness from taking root in your people. God, these are lofty requests, we know. (laughs) They are far beyond our ability to produce on our own strength. And so knowing those things, God, we look to you, we look to your son, we look to your spirit to do what's necessary to glorify your name in ways that we never could, in ways that we don't have the strength to produce, we don't have the power to make possible, make actual on our own. And so we look to you, God, for these needs to be met, knowing that you love your own name and you have promised to exalt your own name, your own reputation in the world. And so we can make these requests confidently, boldly, knowing that you are eager to bring them about in in a way that's in keeping with your will, that will maximize your own glory on the last day. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Father, I praise you and I thank you for the pastors and the teachers that you have given to Grace Bible Church for 21 years. Lord, I thank you that the fruit of their labor here was to raise up other men, to train men and to equip men, such that we can go forward and we can plant a church with pastors who will be capable of doing that very same thing, building up the body of Christ. Father, we live in a world where truth is being maligned, where Falsehood is being proposed and it's being put forth as truth. We know that in all of these things, Lord, what the ears of the believers, what the ears of the non-believers alike need is the truth of the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would be pleased to use Josh, you would be pleased to use Tom, you would be pleased to use Tyler for that very purpose. I pray for the body of Gilbert Bible Church. Lord, as they sit under the teaching of Josh and of Tom and of Tyler, Lord, that they would be ones who are well-equipped with the truth in their own lives. I pray that they would be men and women who continue to pursue you diligently in their own lives, meeting alone with you, the reading of your word, the study of your word, the worship of you in prayer, Lord, so that they could bring to one another the truth. They could speak the truth to one another and they could do so in love. Father, I pray that you would grant them grace. Grace to fit together well. Lord, grace to fit together under new circumstances of a new church, ongoing relationships, how to relate to one another in a new church. Lord, I pray for the grace that each one of them would supply to the other 
the things that are necessary, the resources and the means by which they can be built up. Lord, I pray that they would be an evidence, that they would be a testimony to that part of this town that so desperately needs a good church. Lord, I pray that when the church arrives there in that part of town, that it would be known that that is a, tr a church where the truth is preached, the truth is lived out by those who are there, and that through it you would draw many and you would save many. Father, we know that salvation comes from you. We know that you give it according to your design and according to your pleasure. And we pray that you would accomplish all that you intend. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. As I pray, I am going to use Psalm 103 to inform my prayer. Lord, we do not come to you because we deserve anything. We come to you because of your great mercy. The psalmist writes, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just glorifying who you are through our prayer. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not none of his benefits. Lord, we praise you that you are a God that saves sinners. Lord, we praise you the benefit that you loved us first. Father, the benefit that you would send your son from heaven to earth to die for sinners. He who knew no sin became sin, that we could share in his righteousness. Lord, your benefits are amazing. Who pardons all our iniquities. Father, I praise you, Lord, that you are a God that has forgiven sin, and you've allowed your son to be the payment that our sin deserves. Father, you heal all diseases. Father, you have promised us after faithful life that we will have new bodies. Father, you redeem from the pit. Lord, Ephesians 1 tells us that you save for your glory. Father, I beg you, Lord, to be glorified in this new work, Gilbert Bible Church, and be glorified here at Grace Bible Church. Father, I consider, Lord, just the young children that you have blessed these two bodies with. Father, first and most, Lord, I pray for the children from nursery through student ministries. Lord, please save them at a young age. Protect them from the deceitfulness of sin. Father, I, I pray, Lord, that there would be just many testimonies of children that grew up in Grace Bible Church, in Gilbert Bible Church, and testify to knowing you through faithful moms and dads and faithful churches. Lord, you crown us with your loving kindness and compassion. Father, it is your kindness that leads us to repentance. We would never repent on our own, but Lord, you loved us first and we praise you. Father, you perform righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. Lord, we live in a world that is such a mess. Father, if it be your favor, please use us to be your instrument. Lord, that many would just come to belief through the ministry of Grace Bible Church and Gilbert Bible Church. Lord, I praise you, Lord, that, that you receive glory in saving sinners. And Father, I pray, Lord, for these ministries to be faithful. Lord, Please be glorified. 
The psalmist writes that for man, his days are like grass. Lord, we, we are just here for such a short time. May we be faithful. May we be quick to proclaim the truth of the gospel, that we would never shy away from being bold. Lord, I look forward to see what you will do in the years to come here at Grace Bible Church, and Lord, what you may do and might do in a new work in Gilbert. Father, where else can we go? Lord, we are so utterly dependent on you. And Father, just thinking of a new work, a new Bible church, Lord, beg you for your mercy to give us just direction, guide our path, Lord, that you would be glorified. Father, I long for the day, Father, to, to be with you. And Lord, may my life and may this ministry and the efforts that we put forth here at Grace Bible Church and Gilbert Bible Church bring you glory. Father, thank you for loving your children. Father, thank you for knowing us so well that you are near us. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers and Lord, for caring for us. And I pray all these things in the beautiful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Our great God, maker of heaven and earth, our redeemer, author of perfecter of our faith, sovereign over the universe and Lord of your church, we dare not boast as if we could have anything or do anything good that we did not receive. And we pray that we would not cease to pray for Gilbert Bible Church, to ask that the saints there would be filled with the knowledge of your will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that they might walk in a manner worthy of you, to please you in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in their knowledge of you, strengthened with all power, according to your glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving you thanks, you who have qualified them and us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. God, we thank you for assembling this remarkable group of people. We think about the households represented in those who are going to this church plant. We think of the selfless servants who have been so intentional about finding ways to give of themselves for the establishment and growth of your church. We pray that you'd give them steadfast hearts for trials unforeseen. Prepare Gilbert Bible Church for persecutions to come. Provide for them all that is needed in finances and facilities and servants and wisdom. God, would you grant them faithfulness and fidelity to a foolish message, foolish by the world's standards, which is actually your surpassing power. And would you give them faithfulness, fidelity to your foolish methods? the methods of ministries that the world would scorn and yet you prize. Lord, cause Gilbert Bible Church to, as long as it exists, preach the word, raise up faithful shepherds, train men, disciple men and women, do all that you have said your church should be and do. God, we pray that you would use the discomfort of uprooting from ministries that are comfortable to fuel a longing for each individual at Gilbert Bible Church to be made complete in Christ, that they would labor and strive for these things in one another. God, we pray for the students and student ministries. I believe it is 13 of them going. What a challenge that would be to leave friends 
to leave the comforts, to leave an established ministry, and to go and be an anchor at such a critical age for some new work. We pray that they would see this as an adventure of faith before you, that they would cling to you in dependence upon you. And God, would you be pleased to use students to infiltrate high schools and homeschool co-ops and sports teams with radical young people committed to the countercultural truths of your word and an otherworldly gospel of grace. Would you be pleased, O oh Lord, to use moms caring for little ones to reach neighborhoods of people without hope? Would you be pleased, O oh God, to use robust marriages that look like the gospel to be a transformative influence in a dark world? God, we thank you so much for the privilege of being your children and being wherever you place us. And now to you, O God, who are able to keep us from stumbling and to make us stand in the presence of your own glory, blameless with great joy. To you, the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to you be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. We'd like at this time to invite any of you who are here who are a part of the church plant to embarrassingly come to the front and stand in front of the stage here. Um, And then all of us uh, are just going to join around and uh, we'll close our time with anybody who wants to pray can. Um, We won't record it, Um, but we'll just be together and pray as long as we'd like to. And any of you can do that. And um, feel free to leave whenever you'd like to. Uh, Stay and pray as long as you'd like to. Uh, Fellowship afterwards as long as you'd like to. And uh, we're so glad that you were here and could be a part of this.